Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a table of values if you know an equation, and we're going to do two examples. So here's the first example. Uh, we're asked to make a table of values for the equation y equals 20x plus 400. And then they give us a little situation to tell us what this equation is representing. They say that y is the total cost of yearbooks if x students buy one. All right, so if we look at this equation, it looks like it costs $400 just for any number. So uh, maybe like there's a setup um, for the printing press and that costs $400. That's a fairly common kind of situation with printing. And then we multiply how many students buy a yearbook times 20. So it looks like the cost of yearbook for of each yearbook it cost, is $20. All right, so $20 each plus this $400 we just have to pay once, whether it's one student who buys one or hundreds of students. All right, so we're going to make a table of values. Um, I've already sort of just sketched out a quick little table here. It's important when you put, make your table of values, your x value um, needs to go on the left and y goes on the right. Um, or in other words, uh, x is your independent variable, if you know what that means, and y is your dependent variable. Right? So x on the left. You can think of it as alphabetical order if you're using x and y. Alright, so the first decision we need to make when we make a table of values is what x values to use. And I think if we know a context, we should choose values that are appropriate for the context. So in this case, it doesn't make sense to use like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Because it's unlikely, I think, that we're getting only 5 yearbooks. Um, obviously, it would depend on what kind of school you were imagining, whether it was um, a big institution with thousands of students or just a really small school. But let's say maybe let's say maybe we had like 800 students. Um, so we could make our x values just kind of go up to 800. Now, I would suggest, unless you have a good reason not to, I think it's a good idea to include zero in your table of values, because it shows us some interesting things about the relationships. It's not a hard and fast rule, but I think it's a good idea. And then if we went maybe 2, 4, 6, yeah, we could count up by like 200s here. 200, 400, 600, 800. And so that's a reasonable number of points for a table of values, like five points. That's, I think, not too many, not too few. Um, I would... It's not also not a hard and fast rule, but I really think it's a good idea to increase by the same amount every time, because it really will help you catch uh, any mistakes you might make. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to do calculations um, to figure out what our y value is that goes up with each goes with each of these x values. So you really want to be organized in your work here. It doesn't take long to write, but you want to make sure you write it. If x equals zero, we'll start with. So y is equal to 20 times x, so 20 times 0, plus 400. And I'm going to write these three lines every time. 20 times 0 is 0, plus 400. y equals 400. So uh, we sort of knew that because this $400 is the maybe like the setup fee. All right, uh, next. If x equals 200, what I'll do maybe two, one, one or two more, and then I'll just tell you the values for the last couple. I think it's just important to see some examples, but you probably don't need to see me do this five times. Um, so I'm going to copy the equation, but I'll substitute for my x, I'll substitute 200. So y is 20 times 200 plus 400. So 20 times 200 is, whoops, 4,000. plus 400. So that's 4,400. I'll do one more. If x is 400, y is equal to 20 times x, so that's 20 times 400, plus 400. It's just a coincidence that those two 400s are the same number. So 20 times 400 is 8,000, plus 400 there, so y is equal to 8,400.
All right. Um, so it's probably very good practice for you to do the next two calculations, but for the sake of this video, um, why don't you trust me that this one is 12,400. And if we have 800 students buying yearbooks, it's 16,400. So there we go, we've got a table of values. I just want to point something out that you may have already noticed. If, um, for a very common kind of relationship called a linear relationship, which is probably what most people will be starting with when they're learning to make tables of values, if you made your x values go up by the same amount each time, so here we're going 200 more, 200 more, we're counting by 200s, then your y values should also go up by the same amount each time. So you can check like this. From 400 to 4,400 is plus 4,000. And here, from 4,400 to 8,400 is also plus 4,000. And plus 4,000 and plus 4,000. So I would suggest after you make your table, just check to see if your x values go up by the same amount each time, your y values should also go up by the same amount. It won't be, this, it won't be the same amount in, um, of change in your x and y, but each time, this is plus 4,000, plus 4,000. And just to be clear here, this was plus 200 each time. So the x's are increasing by 200 and the y's are increasing by 4,000. Um, and that, if you do that, you will catch almost all of the calculation mistakes that you might otherwise make. All right, let's do another example. I'm just gonna tape this on over top. All right, in this case, we have the equation y equals negative 2x plus 1, and there's no context for this. Um, so we can sort of choose any um, x and y values that uh, we think will give us information about this um, equation. Um, I would encourage you to choose 0 as one of them. I think what actually I'd like to do here is I'd like to start with 0 in the middle, and I'll go for two values to the left of 0 in the negatives and two values to the right of 0. So we'll go 0, 1, 2, and also negative 1 and negative 2. Right. And for this one, I will show all the calculations. They're pretty quick. So if x equals negative 2, y is equal to negative 2 times negative 2, because I'm substituting for x, plus 1. So negative times negative is positive, so that's 4 plus 1, and y is equal to 5. Right. If x equals negative 1, it's a bit messy there. Then y is equal to negative 2 times negative 1. Plus one, so I've just replaced my x with negative one. Negative two times negative one is positive two, plus one, so that's three. If x is equal to zero, this one's always a quick calculation. Y is equal to negative two times zero plus one, so that's zero plus one, so that's one. If uh, x equals 1, then y is equal to negative 2 times 1 plus 1. So that's negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. We'll do one more, and then we'll go and check to make sure that we've got a nice pattern x is equal to 2, y is negative 2 times 2, plus 1, so that's negative 4 plus 1, negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Alright, so we'll just quickly double check here. Um, now, it's not every single kind of relationship that works like this, um, but... If you're always increasing or decreasing by the same amount, except in one uh, with one number, you really probably would want to double check that number. So here what we've done with the x's, we're always increasing by one. I was just counting up by ones. Plus 
one each time. Oh, sorry, that was a little bit off the screen. I just wrote plus one there. And then with the y's, so this is a decreasing pattern. My y's are getting smaller. So I went, went down two, and here again, down two, down two, and down two. So uh, it doesn't matter if it's increasing or decreasing, just for, in terms of checking if we made any mistakes. As long as, as these ones are doing the same thing as each other, these ones should also be doing the same thing as each other. All right. Okay, good luck with your tables.